today we're going to be taking a look at some motors from ZT Innovate. Now, this isn't a review. This is an overview, a look, a showcase, whatever you want to call it. It's not been sponsored. It's not paid, but they did send me these motors for free to look at. And what I just want to do today is give you a bit of an overview of them. I can't review them because I've not flown them yet. And with motors, I tend to not review them because it's really hard to do that unless you've flown them for six months. So we're going to take a look at them today. I'm going to use these over the next six or seven months, and then I will comment about them on my live streams and other videos. But what this will do is give you an idea of what these motors are, what they cost, and what they look like. So before we get into it, I just want to be crystal clear. As I said just now, this video is not paid. It's not sponsored, but I did receive the motors for free. I did not pay for these motors. However, as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so I've been sent over five sets of motors to take a look at from ZT Innovate. Now, we've got our more traditional five-inch size motors, and then we've got some bigger ones here for larger builds. Now, size-wise, what we've got is 2207-2040 kV and a 2207-2085 kV. So we're going to take a look at them first of all for our 5-inch. And then we've got our bigger motors. We've got our 2807, which is 1300 kV. And then we've got our 2812s, which are available in 1325 kV and 915 kV, depending on what you want to build. So what we'll do first of all is have a look at the two 2207s and then we'll move on to the biggies towards the end. Now we have two different models of motor here. The 2207-2040 is the VTI, which I've got here, and the 2207-2085 is the ZTI. Now you will instantly see that there are some differences. We'll have a look at them individually now in a moment, but you can see one is a Unibel design, whereas one isn't. Both of these are available in the two different sizing. So for instance, you can get this motor in the 2040 kV, but you can also get it in the 2085. And that also stands for the ZTI as well. You can get it in 2040 or 2085. The sizing isn't specific to the motor type. Okay, looking over the VTI first of all, you can look there and see that Unibel design. This is the 2040 kV, but as I've said, you can get it in the 2085. Now it's fitted with a hollow shaft. I don't know if it's stainless steel or titanium. It doesn't actually say on the spec, but it looks pretty much the same as what we see on most of the motors. You can see underneath we've got a usual foot, we've got our magnets and then our copper windings. Now with regards to the magnets on this, they say it is fitted with 12N14P, has the usual magnets you would expect, which is the N55SHs. It also has their military 260 degree silver plated enamel copper wire, which should help with the motors with regards to burnout. This is the same thing that we saw on Ross's motors when he released them, and you can see it in the colouring. With regards to the weight, they say it comes in at 34 grams with the wires, but let's just get them on the scales and have a look. I shouldn't have unwrapped it actually, but let's toss it on. There you go, 34.62, so pretty close to what the main spec says. Now they're rated for 2 to 6S. They do have the charts up on their website with regards to what the motor performance and the specification is. I'm not going to go through it in this video, but it is there if you want to have a look. Next, moving over to the ZTI, this is the 2085 version, but still 2207. Now you can see this doesn't have a Unibel design, it's a two part, you've got your top section, and then you've got your bottom section there, and then you've got your magnets placed in underneath. Basically the same overall setup as we saw on the VTI. So you've still got your hollow shaft. You've still got that silver plated enamel copper wire. Weight wise on this one, they say comes in a little bit less than the VTI. They say 32.8 grams. So let's have a look at that. It says 33.6 there, but we do still have the wrap tie on. So let's just get that off and then try it again. I'm coming in at 32. 3.2 but there may be a little bit of a variance i wonder if that's without the nut yeah somewhere in between again very close to the specification shaft diameter is four millimeters something i didn't mention on the other one overall similar but again two-part design really nice looking motor though i like the design machining looks really clean and tidy really it depends which one you're looking for with regards 
to choosing between the two. We'll talk about price and stuff a little bit more later on. Next, moving over to the 2807 1300 KV ZTI. Now, like the smaller one, this is the two-part bell design. So you've got your top section machined, and then you've got your outer strap, and then you've got your magnets and everything mounted to it there. Now, this motor still features a single hollow shaft. We have our copper windings. However, if you look on these, this doesn't have the silver enamel copper wire. It has the standard enamel copper wire, which they rate to 220 degrees still high temperature but not as high temperature as you see there i'll just show you there you can see the color difference now this is still fitted with n52 sh magnets you've got your bearing underneath obviously as well it's a 12 n 14 p setup and overall it's just a bigger version of the 2207 that we saw earlier now weight wise if we just take a look at these and pop it on the scales this is coming in at 59.29 with the tie strap on board so it'll be a little bit less than that but again looks to be a really nice and clean and tidy motor finally then we have our 2812 1325 and our 2812 915 now these are both zti based motors so if we hop out this one first so that is our 1325 kv so you can see that there zti again same design aluminium top end no silver coated wire on this one just the standard high temperature copper wire really nice same as the other one and then let's get out our 915 version just take a look at that so again you can see the the overall outside diameter is the same it's just the difference in the windings with regards to size you can see the difference there when we start looking at the size difference to the 2807 you can see it's quite a difference there but when it comes to the 2812s both the same size it's just the windings that are different so what you'll see is differences in there can we see them underneath yeah, you can see there's more windings in places on the motor on the left. It's hard to tell, but you can see the difference. Overall, some really nice big motors, depending on what size you want to build. They're going to offer between these different setups. Again, I'm not going to go through the chart specifically in this video, but between these two, for instance, you've got a 915. Let's just get that round and 1325 depends what size build you want obviously the 915 is going to be a slower motor compared to the 1325 so you're going to throw potentially a bigger prop on this or at least you might want to fly with the same prop but have a little bit more efficiency on the 915 compared to the 1325 again it's really going to depend on your choice of setup now, as I've said, this isn't a review, it's more of an overview. And if you're after the full technical details for the motors, they have them all on their website. They list all of the motors that are available. So, for instance, if you want to understand a little bit more, especially around the ones we were looking at here, the 20. 812s they've got their full specification listed and then if we start looking at the charts for instance the zti 2812 915 kv which was the first one we looked at on a gem farm 8040 you can see the chart here so for instance if we just look at 100 throttle a minute you've got a 24.83 volt 25 volts a 6s you're talking uh 2770 grams of thrust at 37 amp Whereas if you moved up to the 1325 size, you'd have 19, uh, sorry, 36,400 grams of thrust. So you're gaining a chunk of thrust, but you're drawing a lot more current for it. You are at 73 amps compared to 37 amps. So again, it's going to depend on your prop size, depending on what motor you want to choose and what performance you want to get versus what battery life you get from it as well whether you're building a long range rig or you're building something that you want the maximum performance from 
Also, they do list their prices for their motors on their website direct as well. So you've got the VTIs, which are $21.20, and then you've got your bigger motors down here. But again, the pricing on these is really quite nice, quite competitive, not terrible at all, especially when you look at like the 28.12s, $24.30. So yeah, some good pricing here for larger motors, especially. They're not the cheapest smaller motor in the world. So for the VTIs, you're coming in at $21.20. It's up there with the more higher end pricing, but you are getting that silver plated wire motor for that. Okay, now as this isn't a review, I can't tell you about longevity and things like this, but I just can share with you some initial thoughts. They're definitely not the cheapest motors on the market, but they're very nice. They are really well made as far as I can tell. I really like the overall build quality. The silver enamel wire is very nice as well. Not the first time we've seen it, but it's nice to see. I think they're definitely a high quality motor. It's really hard for me to give you comments on, you know, what are they going to burn out like right now? I'm going to put them in builds and I'll talk about them over a period of time. I don't really think anyone should review a motor and say, hey, this is great or not. If you like it, consider checking it out. If you don't, don't. Or perhaps wait and see and see what people's feedback's like. I can't comment on the, the long-term stuff because I simply haven't done it yet. Okay, so that's it on this one. As I've said, not a review. If you're interested in getting a set, there will be a link to them in the description. I want to say a big thank you to ZT Innovate for sending them over. Finally, I just want to say, if you have any questions, put them in the chat below. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my Patreons who support the channel. If you'd like to support us, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon or buy me a coffee. That's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.